Okay, I've selected an image that I want to cut out and then eventually move into a background of my own choosing. They're easier to cut out when you have a white background or a plain background and a lot of contrast between the subject and the background. A black background with a totally white subject is, is a good example. A subject up against a white background is ideal. Photoshop allows you to use very complicated backgrounds to cut subjects out. However, it takes a lot more time in the masking as well as in the back end to get the image exactly the way you want it. Step number one, so I want to make sure I'm on the either the quick mask, quick selection or the magic wand tool. I'm going to select magic wand in this case. I've got it at a tolerance of 10 for right now because this is what I'm going to use to do some minor touch-up on this image when I, before I cut it out. I'm going to come over to Select. I'm going to select Subject. And I'm going to let Photoshop do its work. This is a pretty good selection. Uh, Photoshop does a very good job. I'm on the minus because I want to take away a couple of places of background before I go into Studio Magic 1. I have a little spot here and because I'm not working on the subject I need it to subtract. So I'm going to do this. I'm just going to click on it a couple of whoops too much. I'm going to back up and so I'm going to take and just make sure that that's as close to it as I can get. I have a couple of places out here that I want to pick up just to help us in the final analysis and her hair up here will will get okay we'll bring this up there's background up around her finger and her leg so I want to pull that in as tight as possible I have some down here underneath her shoe that I want to remove I can press the alt key or the option key but I'm going to go up here to the plus I'm gonna just click on her shoe to make sure I get that heel in there I'm gonna go back to negative because I have a little bit underneath this shoe and anything else will pick up in refine edge I can actually bring this back out a little bit and then to do that I'm gonna go back over here use quick selection because it's a little bit bigger brush so I'm gonna bring this out around her fly away hair. I'm just going to gently do it out here as well and then make sure I have it. Okay, that's too much. If I press and hold the Alt key or the Option key on a Mac, I can bring this back in so it's not quite as atrocious out here when we go to do this. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm not unhappy with the selection that Photoshop created for me and chose for me. It's a little tight on her legs, but we'll take care of that. I mean, I can come down here. I'm inside the subject, so if I hit plus, I can just kind of run down her leg here and get the and bring that seam out just a little bit. Now I'm going to go to Studio Magic 1. I want to make sure I'm on Pro Mask. And because I selected the subject to start with, all I need is Pro Mask. I'm just going to hit Detailed Cutout. With detail cut out in place, I use a red layer behind it because it just makes everything more visible. I want to make sure I'm on the Refine Edge brush, which is the second brush in line. And then I'm just going to go over and gently see a little bit of a white spot right there. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to run down. I'm going to increase the size of my brush by using the right bracket key. I'm going to run down or just run down the outside of her leg and we'll clean up the the background and the highlights there and then we have to wait then I've got a little bit of a shadow point underneath her toe I'm gonna to pick that out get rid of that between her heel and the ball of her foot I see a little bit of white background in there so I'm gonna reduce the brush size because I don't want to kit too much of the other items and that gets rid of that little bit underneath her shoe on the right on her left shoe so I'm just gonna go up and do that and the rest of it looks really clean 
Okay, I'll show you how to take care of that spot that's in her heel in just a couple of seconds. Check here. Okay, now I'm going to make a bigger brush and I'm just going to run from this side of her face. I'm going to run it all around her hair, inside, outside, and down and through here. And stop. Okay, see we missed a couple of things. I'm going to go down just a little to a smaller brush, run it right down there around the tip of her elbow. I'm going to come back up. I got a little spot in there. And I got a little bit of white background right in there. And she is ready for, yeah, let's see, I got a little bit right here. Okay, I'm going to do a double check. Okay, your settings are default here. <clears throat> I do not use Smart Radius so we can close that up. I like a little bit smoother edge because this way it blends better with a background. And I also feather it to about 1.5. Okay, I'm going to increase the contrast to 10. Well, that is if it will let me here. 8, 9, 10. It's got a mind of its own. I'm going to leave the edge shift at negative 7. This we have found to be the better one. Even though I click on remember settings, it never does. And then I'm going to hit OK. I know her cutout, but I'm going to take the background out just to take a quick look. I really like that. It looks very clean. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these two I well I'm gonna leave this background here I'm gonna leave the gray layer here I'm gonna take the background layer out because I don't need it there's nothing we need to repair now what I'm going to do is come up to the background cutout layer and I'm going to right click on the this case the right box this is called the layer mask and I'm going to apply the layer mask now we have two ways of doing this we can lay a background in behind her or we can move her onto another background. I'm going to select a background. I typically use bridge, so let me get this up here. I'll bring it over into the window so we can see it. Okay, so this is where I picked up the model from. I'm going to go up to one of the background collections. In this case, I think she'd look really cool in a Route 66 background. So what I'm going to do is come up here to Epic Location Sets. Bingo. And I'm going to go to Route 66. Ah, let's put her at Roy's Cafe. Okay, this is part of this is part of Roy's in Amboy, California, on Route 66. So I'm just going to double click on this, and it's going to then I'm going to open it. The only thing I might do before I throw it into Photoshop is come up here in Camera Raw, and use my correction. Okay, and I'm going to level it out just a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to open the image. And now I have a choice. We have the image inside the screen. Now, what I was trying to tell you earlier is this. I can put this behind her, or I can go over here, and I can move her on top of the other image. It's whichever is easier. In this case, I'm going to put the background. I'm going to bring the background over to her. It's the same technique. So I'm going to select this image right here. I'm just going to make sure I'm on it. I'm going to go to my Move tool, which is the one with four arrows on it. I'm going to hold my left mouse button down, and I'm simply going to drag it over until it opens up the other image, and then I'm going to plop it in here. I had not highlighted the correct layer, so I'm just going to drag this down above the right layer so it's behind her. Then I'm going to move the layer. It'd help if I were on the layer. Okay, so I'm going to move this in, and we're going to do this. Okay, so I'm going to hold the shift key down to give me a little bit different look at it. Okay, and I'm going to kind of, I'm going to move her, actually move her out of the shadow on purpose. Now, what I'm going to do is, I want that out of our... Okay, 
there we go so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit OK but what I don't like is where she quite honestly really is, is standing it looks like she's floating in midair so using my arrow keys I'm going to just bring her down just a little bit and I don't see any need to trans you know transform her but because I have show thumb transform controls open I have the bounding box here otherwise all you had to do was use command T on a Mac or control T on a Windows machine and then I'm just going to bring her down in size so it looks just a little bit more realistic then I'm going to accept that what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a shadow to anchor her I have an idea. I know where the sun's coming. I can see the shadows in back of her, so I want to match the shadow. I'm going to come to Studio Magic 1, and I'm going to press Shadow Caster. I'm going to create a new shadow. By default, it creates a shadow at the 2 o'clock angle. Now, notice that I applied the layer mask before I moved or before I moved anything. The reason for that is if I did not apply the layer mask the shadow would just come up and give me a big black box now it's working off of the cutout image I know that's not the correct shadow I'm gonna click on preview and I'm gonna move it out here because I want to see what's going to look much more realistic to me it looks like a five o'clock shadow is going to be where I want to start I'm going to close this out because it's just for viewing. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on 5 o'clock shadow. And it's automatically going to change the position of the shadow. Using my move tool, I'm going to just twist it slightly so that it anchors underneath her foot here. And if I hold the control or command key down, depending on the operating system, I can do a pers what's called a perspective warp. Okay. And then let's twist it just a hair more this way so our angles are better. The devil's in the detail. I know it's not perfect right this second. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit enter, use the check mark. And while I still have it fairly dark, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to put a layer mask on this. And I'm going to take a look at what I want to do is I'm, I just kind of want to blend this in a little bit more. So I'm going to move it up just a hair more into the scene. Then I'm going to come down and select the brush tool. On the layer mask, I'm just going to kind of paint out. That's too much, but just control Z it. I'm just going to kind of paint out this and blend it in just a little bit and if I make a mistake I just reverse the I just reverse the colors and I can paint it back in there we go and then I want this a little bit wider but I'll worry about this later because what I want to do right now is make this look like it should. It needs to be softened a little bit. I'm just going to hit softness and I'm going to bring the intensity down just a little bit. It's too much. And this is just subjective. The slant is fine. I might come back down here and let's click on here. Go back to my move tool and I'm going to downsize the image so I have an idea of what's going on. And I'm going to press and hold and I'm going to bring this back into here and you can see that I'm I'm working the I'm working this individually now because I want the shadow to look like it should There is my model into with the background that I wanted. If I think the background's a little too harsh, because it's on top of this gray layer, I can come up here to my opacity and I can decrease, I can blur the background, I can blend the background in. So if, let's say I'm thinking of perspective here. I want to bring the intensity back up. I'm going to come over to this layer. I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to go to blur. 
I'm going to put a Gaussian blur on this, not a lot, but just enough to give me what they call bokeh in the background. That might be a little bit too much. Now I have perspective. If I want to work more on the model, for example, I'm not real thrilled because of the lighting here. She looks a little hot. I'm going to bring her back into camera raw. I'm going to press auto just to see. That's a little bit too much. I'm going to bring this back up to five. I like that. I want a little bit more contrast. I want a little bit less contrast in her. I want to bring the shadows down just a little. Blacks are fine. I'm actually going to drop the clarity off, give her a little bit of a glow. Vibrance is okay, and dehaze is fine. I'm going to hit OK, and there we have a much better lit model. And everything we did has been a composition.